Brian Deese is one of the top economic advisors for the Biden White House. And any lie that Joe Biden tells about the economy comes through Brian Deese's department. Listen carefully. This is George Snuffleupagus asking him about the economy and the inflationary situation that we find ourselves in. So what can Americans expect in the short term? Is inflation going to get worse before it gets better? Is there anything President Biden can, get, can do in the short term? Yeah, and here is what, uh, what uh, Brian Deese said his short-term plan was. We're focused on how to address this in the short term and the medium term, George. In the short term, number one, we have to finish the job on COVID. We know that the more that people feel comfortable getting out into the economy, going to movies rather than buying a television at home, working in the workplace, the more we can return a sense of normalcy to our economy. All right, so listen to this. Inflation, how are we gonna bring down inflation? How are we gonna bring back the rising prices of pretty much everything, the rising price of gas? How are we gonna bring down the rising price of everything that gas you know, delivers to the grocery stores? How are we gonna bring back the, how are we gonna get the supply chain back moving? His answer, as is the buy an answer to pretty much every problem there is is covid got it vaccinations we need to get covid under control we got to vaccinate everybody so covid's under control and then inflation will come down and in fact not just the workforce which is what they always i mean listen it's kind of interesting because he says in one he says in one breath look people need to get back to work they need to feel safe at work so we've got to get COVID under control but listen to what he says next getting those shots out for five to 11 year olds is going to provide a lot of comfort to American families we're making a lot of progress on that front okay so now he's saying we're going to bring down inflation when Americans get back to work and Americans aren't going to get back to work until they're uh, confident they're not going to get COVID so we've got to get shots in the arms of five to 11 year olds are there a lot of five to 11 year olds in the workforce are there a lot of 5 to 11-year-olds that aren't going to work because they're uncomfortable because they fear COVID? I mean, I look around, I look around this. Look, we act like 5 to 11-year-olds, but we're much older. Some of us much, much older. 5 to 11-year-olds do are not the reason that there is an inflationary problem today with our economy. Yet, here's the Biden White House trying to explain to you that COVID is the issue, not just COVID, not just vaccines for the workforce, which they've already mandated through OSHA. But now they're saying, if we really want the economy to get going again, it's those hardworking, dedicated 5 to 11-year-olds that this country, the backs of whom this country is, is, is running on, they've got to get vaccinated too so that we can all finally uh, get to see prices come back to normal. Getting more workplaces COVID free is going to make uh, more Americans comfortable getting back into the labor market as well. All right, so COVID, we got that. What's next? The second thing we can do right now is focus on the supply chain issues. I point out, the second thing we can do for inflation is focus on the supply chain. The second thing, that should really be the first thing. Actually, the first thing should be becoming more energy independent, opening up our strategic oil reserves, um, you know, reopening the Keystone XL pipeline, realizing that the Green New Deal ain't none of that. The only green that they're producing that's new is all this money that's being pumped into the OPEC economy and being sent abroad because we're all paying higher prices for gas. But the second thing they're going to focus on is the supply chain. All right, how are they going to do that? You know, right now, the American economy is moving more goods through the economy than we ever have. But that's creating some challenges. We're working with the ports in L.A. and Long Beach, getting them to go 24-7 and getting right to work in implementing this historic infrastructure bill. So the historic infrastructure bill, which I'm going to be honest with you, they passed over a week ago. Joe Biden is just now signing today, so it's not even law. And he's not even signing it in the morning so they could get right to work on it. He's signing it in the afternoon, so it's going to sit around for another 12 hours before anyone does anything, before any money is doled out or distributed to the states. But if this thing was so historic, then last Friday... When they signed it in the middle of the night with those turncoat Republicans who stabbed their party and the American people in the back, when that happened, they should have sent it right to the president's desk. He should have signed it on Saturday morning. But it sat around for, let's see, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's like 10 days. This is so historic and so important to curb inflation that we're going to let it sit around for 10 days collecting dust. And then on the 10th day, late in the afternoon, right before businesses and banks close, then we'll make it a law. And then we'll wait another 12 hours. And when the banks open up the next day at 10, then we'll start sending out money to these hardworking American people that really need it so we can bring down inflation. So COVID getting the shots in the arms of 5 to 11-year-olds, supply chain, and then waiting as long as we possibly can to make this historic.
historic and necessary legislation law. That's the Biden plan for attacking the inflation problem. See, that's, a, that's the most Biden plan of all the Biden plans I've ever heard about.